Amigos, bienvenidos a, a una entrevista más aquí a Movix. Tengo el gusto y el placer de platicar con Michael Abbott Jr., quien es protagonista de la película Demoníaca y con el que vamos a, a platicar un poco acerca de esta película. Michael, it's an honor having you here in Movix. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I, I just recently saw the movie and, and, I, and I was pretty shaken. But first, I want to talk a little about you. Uh, you come from uh, movies uh, and series like Moth, uh, Fear the Walking Dead, Loving. Can you tell me how was the path you took uh, to get to the part of Michael in, in the, the Dark and the Wicked? And uh, what was the, the thing that attracted you the most about it? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, the first seven years of my career out of college, I'd gone to an acting conservatory school. Uh, I'd worked primarily in theater up until about 2006 when uh, my college friend Jeff Nichols, uh, film director and writer, contacted me and said, uh, I've just written my first uh, my first feature film and I've, I've written a role for you. And I was like, uh, Jeff, I'm I'm a, I am a trained theater actor i don't know anything about being in front of the camera and he assured me that he would uh, uh hold my hand along the way and 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 from that moment on 2007 uh when the film premiered i you know fell in love with with the the medium of of filmmaking and storytelling in the uh theatrical sense and uh so i've had a great opportunity over the last several years to work with a lot of great directors and a lot of work Uh, a lot of great writers, uh, different scales of budget from from very small budgeted independent films up to, you know, uh, fairly recently working with Scorsese on a 200 plus million dollar budget. Um, so I consider myself uh, lucky to have had that opportunity. I'd never done a horror film before. And uh, one of the producers of Dark and the Wicked, Sonny Mall, he had reached out to me. We had worked together once before on a film called In the Radiant City back in 2016. And uh, he said, I want you to read the script. I think, uh, I think it'll speak to you. And I was like, Sonny, I, I don't even really like horror films. They scare me. I have enough uh, anxiety and fear as, a, as an individual. I don't seek those out for entertainment. But um, I read the script anyway, and I think what, what struck me the most was the fact that it wasn't just a horror film. It was a, uh, a psychological thriller. It was a family drama, and it certainly had horror elements to it. And the characters themselves, I felt uh, they were absolutely, totally relatable. I felt like an audience would, would see these characters on screen and... and uh, commiserate with them to a certain extent and, and see themselves in, in those characters' shoes under those circumstances because it deals with, the film deals with loss and losing a loved one, saying goodbye to your parents. And these are all things that uh, unfortunately that we can relate to or having to experience. So uh, I knew it was going to be a special project and I knew that if I was going to uh, dive into the pool and have my first horror film experience then uh who better for it to, to 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 be with than one of the masters of the medium brian bertino uh, you you just uh, talked about something else i was gonna ask you you uh, come from action movies and and series and another kind of, of film but not especially uh scary movies how how was the experience of being part of one and especially one that as you say, has uh, a lot of elements from, from other kind of genres. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that made this uh, a very personal story, and a very uh, personal story for Brian in particular, uh, we, we shot this film on Brian's uh, family farm where he grew up. And he had actually written the script for this movie in the cabin that we film in, in, in the movie. And uh, I thought it was uh, especially poignant because the setting of the film and this house in particular really do become characters of themselves uh, in, in the film. I think the, the setting becomes 
a very important part of the story. So we knew going into it that it was a very personal story for Brian and he knew exactly uh, what shots he needed to get. He knew where the camera was going to be for, for every line of dialogue in the movie. So a lot of, a lot of the hard work that, that eats up time on a set is figuring out where the camera is going to go and how to sell these scares. But Brian had all of that pre-planned out. So we were really able to take all of that extra time and focus on these relationships and explore uh, you know, the, 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 the simmering uh, uh, the vitality, which was underneath this family and kind of bubbling up to the surface. Uh, so, so, yeah. And because we did shoot it where Brian grew up, he, it was important to him that it feel very natural. And so the crew took a lot of the resources that were already in place there. And uh, we just kind of uh, made them fit into this story. So the, the lighting that you see is all natural light. And uh, a lot of the set decoration that you see in the props were all things that were already in place uh, on this farm. So I think, um, and because of that, it was, it already felt scary. So half of our job is, pretending to be scary, acting scary. But all we really had to do was, was sit in silence in this farm in the middle of nowhere and you couldn't help not to be scared. So, uh, and I think that comes through in the final product. That should have been pretty scary. Yeah, it's pretty scary pretty for sure. Well, how, how was it working with uh, Marine Ireland? She plays your sister and is there a special kind of uh, treatment for these characters when you are close, but you have to make the character feel strange? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, not long before we went into production on this film, there was another actress that was going to be playing Louise, my sister. And uh, that actress had to drop out because of a scheduling issue And I immediately went to the director and to the producers and said, I really think you guys should look at, at Marin Ireland for this role. Uh, we had played siblings once before back in 2016 in a film called In the Radiant City. And uh, so I knew how incredible she was. And uh, we already had a built in history. Um, so, you know, a lot of times you're, you're, you're meeting people who are playing your lovers or your family the day that you start filming. So the fact that we already had uh, a, a relationship, I think only served the film in a way that it felt more, more organic. And we certainly felt totally comfortable with one another. And, uh, and I realized too, that she had also never done a horror movie before this. So I had to, she made me promise her that if we were going to dive into the pool together into this black hole, Um, that we were going to do it together, hold hands and take the journey together. And then, you know, Brian Bertino was right there to, to embrace us and, and uh, take us on the journey because it is a lot different shooting this, this type of film than a straight drama or a straight comedy. It's a, a lot more camera setups to sell scares. And uh, so it's a lot of extra time. Um, so it really was for us kind of a boot camp in what it takes to, to, to make a movie with, with this type of story. Um, but I think Marin Ireland is, uh, one of the most talented actresses working today. She's, she's equally as captivating on stage as she is on screen. And I think we're, we're, we are just now beginning to see what she has, uh, the, the ability to do. I think she's going to be around for a long time. And I think we're going to continue to see some great work come from her. And I think it's, it's a lot harder being uh, uh, able to scare someone with just um, things happening in the background, with mm. lighting, with darkness, that just making a, a jump scare. Uh, right. Did you find that that hard uh, or especially uh, hard for you uh, after not being uh, ever in a, in a scary movie? You say, how do I get that part done right? 
Yeah, no, I don't know that I've found it especially hard. I think, you know, your your job as an actor is to know what the circumstances of your character are in the script. And then when you're filming, uh, trust that you've done the work prior to arriving. And you really kind of have to give yourself over and and uh, and submit to those circumstances. And I think if you you allow yourself to uh, to fully embrace what these characters are experiencing or hearing or seeing or smelling, uh, then, then hopefully that, that performance will, will come through on the screen. But I think the fact that, you know, we, we were shooting on this farm in the middle of nowhere, 90% of the time we were filming at night in the dark, uh, you couldn't help but be scared. Uh, and I think one of the things that Brian did so beautifully in the film was he embraced the silence. And that's one thing that uh, I feel like we don't explore as much in cinema anymore because we're all, uh, it, it's like everyone has OCD, ADHD, and uh, we constantly need to be stimulated by a flash or uh, a monster jumping out or, or scary music. And I think one of the, one of my favorite things about the film is that Brian really took the time to embrace the silence because so much can be said through saying nothing and just actors listening, listening to each other, listening to where they are. Um, and I think that, I think that reads in the final product. What would you consider is worst or scarier? A monster, a ghost that is there and it's chasing you, or this uh, kind of entity that is like scary gaslighting you, making you uh, think about things and thinking, you, making you think you're crazy. Right. I think I think it's certainly for me. It's certainly the the one that you can't see, the the evil that uh, you can't see with with your two eyes. Um, I think um, you know one of the one of the reasons that I wasn't a huge horror fan prior to this is because um, when I see monsters in film, I don't get I don't I'm not scared of that because I know that that's not real. But if you can't see them and you know that they're there, you have no idea what they look like and or what they're capable of doing. So I think that's much scarier to me. I'm sure there are a lot of people who think the opposite, um, but but not knowing what is there seems like that would be the scarier of the two for sure. And can you tell me about the experience of uh, sharing set with uh, Sandra Berkeley? Oh, Xander. Uh, Xander is uh, a, a great, great guy and talk about a veteran of the business. The guy's been around for years and years and, and um, has done some incredible films. And another actor who always commits 110%, no matter how uh, extreme the circumstances are, um, you know, and, and the other beautiful thing about Xander is, is he loves that exploration. No two takes were ever the same. He would uh, try new things. He brought so many ideas to the table. Uh, my favorite Xander story from the set was we were, we were setting up for a shot, which was supposed to be in the rain and it didn't rain that day. So they had to set up a rain machine. So it took some time to set up and uh, Xander, ended up with a spider on his, on the brim of his hat. And uh, he was so enthralled with this spider that had landed on his hat, fallen out of this tree and on his hat, that he told Brian he wanted to make sure the, the spider stayed on his hat uh, through, throughout the scene that we were shooting in the driveway. And if you look very closely, you can see the spider circling the brim of his of his hat when we were standing out in the driveway in the rain. Um, but, you know, Xander is a, uh, I don't know how old he is. He's, uh, we'll, we'll call him 40. Uh, but uh, he's, he really is a kid at heart. You know, it's, it's, it's like playing on the playground with, with a, 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 another kid. He's, he's, he's in for the, he's in for the play. He's in for the, 
the exploration of the circumstances and uh, and a hundred percent full commitment. So it was great to have him there. And kudos there for the acting of, of the spider. Right, exactly. Well, the sad thing is the spider had had a bigger ended up having a bigger trailer than all of us. He Did ate he all the crafty. Uh, yeah. And then he didn't even get a credit in the film, which was, I was mm -hmm. upset about that. Yeah. It's on uh, IMDb page. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. His, <laughs> as soon as he catches wind of that, he's going to have his representatives calling someone, I'm sure. That's awesome. It's such a discovery. Uh, I have uh, a last question. Uh, so um, it, this is like a must question for all scary movies. Did anything scary happen while filming this movie anything paranormal supernatural uh nothing paranormal or supernatural i mean the scariest thing for me in the filming of this my last day of filming uh my very last shot the very last take of uh my work on the film was the scene of louise and i sitting on the back porch And uh, my character tells her that I've been, I saw my mother through our, uh, through my bedroom window. And uh, we were shooting this scene in the middle of the night. It was probably two or three. And uh, the camera was set up across the front of the porch. And then Brian was, was in the yard, maybe 50 feet away or so. And between one of the takes, he kind of motioned for me to come out for a note. And so I, walk down and talk to him. And as I'm walking down, I step down off the porch. And as I'm walking down, it might, my, my leg feels like I have a rubber band and it's twisting inside my leg. So I'm trying to, you know, rub my knee a little bit and have this conversation with him. I go back, I sit down, we finish the scene. By the end of the scene, my, my, my left knee is swollen like a basketball. So my rap was the crew picking me up in a chair, putting me in a truck. I went to the hospital and uh, back to New York the next day, come to find out I had torn my meniscus in my left knee and had to have surgery, uh, emergency surgery to repair that. So that was the scariest thing that happened to me on that production. And it's to this day, it's the scariest thing that's happened to me on set because you don't think about stuff like that. We're so focused on, uh, you know, our, our relationships with our fellow actors and making sure we hit the beats and remember the dialogue and, and take the notes from camera and make sure we're finding our spots. And uh, that one really threw me for a loop because I wasn't prepared to lose a meniscus that day, but it was all I, worth it. I, I would have said that it, it, it's scary to see your uh, your dead mother or something, but the way you got to see your dead mother in the movie, that's got to be the freakiest thing ever. It was pretty freaky. And, you know, uh, kudos to the the special effects makeup team, Tara, on, on this movie. Um, I never saw anything that felt contrived or felt like a cartoon. Everything felt... Uh, uh, rooted in 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 organic and um yeah i think there yes seeing my mother in that barn was pretty scary and then you know i think of like uh ella who plays the little girl that shows up and and knocks on the door to tell uh louise that grandfather has passed Uh, I, that's one of the scariest scenes to me. I wasn't even there the day they filmed that. And, and when I watch the movie now, I'm like, wow, that is really a captivating performance with just a few lines. Um, and that's all, that's all thanks to, to Brian. I mean, I he, no, there was his, his attention to detail, um, I think served this film in a, in a big, big way. And I think the more times you watch it, the more things you see, And you might watch it six or seven times and you might end up on that seventh time seeing something in the film that you've never seen before. I guarantee that will happen. I guarantee it. it's, it's more than a one watch film. Uh, but I'm thrilled that Mexico is finally getting it. Uh, it's certainly going to land differently post pandemic than it would have pre pandemic because, you know, we're dealing with loss, losing a parent, saying goodbye to loved ones, uh, which I think prior to dealing with the global pandemic, 
those are all things that we kind of took for granted, our relationships with our family. And I think now we take a little more time, invest a little more time in, in what those mean to us. And so I think this film certainly lands differently because of that. I'm going to have to rewatch it to see what it means. <laughs> yes, yes. But Michael, I'm afraid this is all the time we, we have. Uh, I, I really want to thank you for, for this interview, for talking up, uh, to us about Demoniaca, The Dark and the Wicked. And very good luck here in Mexico with your movie. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time uh, to speak with me and, and making people aware of the film. I hope everyone goes to see it. And uh, find me on, uh, find me on uh, uh, social media and, and tell me what you thought. If you hate it, don't find me on Instagram. <laughs> A todos en Movix, muchas gracias. Michael Abbott Jr., Demoníaca, próximamente en cines. No se la pierdan. Gracias.